Welcome to Checks and Balances. I'm Michael Vincent. This is James Blair and another Money Month special. This one is Living Paycheck to Paycheck, How to Increase Your Income. Oh, geez, I tell you what, I need a cold shower after that last one, <laughs> talking all about how to pay off debt. Now, this is going to be, look, that last one was incredibly important. I might argue the most important one we've done yeah. to date. But um, this one's a lot more fun, Mike. I like to say, I don't have an expense problem. I have an income problem. It is. So, look, you might look at this and go, how to increase your income. Wow, thank you. You tell me how I can get paid more and I'll tell you how I can save more. But I think we have an interesting perspective of this as two people who uh, employ people uh, on businesses and have these conversations periodically. I actually think we can provide quite a bit of insight here. Mm. And also like our personal insights, you know, from our career starting to where we are now. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Now, before we talk about how to um, grow your income, I want to talk about this idea of living paycheck to paycheck and that. You know, you've got people in $50,000 a year. And one of my favorite sayings at the moment is if you can't manage 50 grand, you have no right to manage 500,000. Yeah, everyone just thinks if I had $10,000 more per year, I'd be sweet. Yeah. Well, if you can't manage this, you can't manage that. Lifestyle creep mm. is a bitch. Yeah. And you need to learn to create a budget. Once again, we've got the budgeting episode. Um, but the reality is it's about 60% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. My, it's a scary number. Yeah, it is, but it's not surprising, right? I think um, we see a number of people come, who come in to uh, talk to us about a mortgage, a financial plan, and really have no idea where their money's going. If you don't know where your money's going, you're always going to be living paycheck to paycheck. Yep. Um, so while getting your income up is great, it's there's two parts to the ledger, right? There's the income and expenses. So just make sure you are focusing as well on the expense mm. side. But let's do the fun bit, Mike. Increase I want more. more money. Yeah. Mike, where can I find more money? What you do is you wait till uh, I'd say a Friday at about 7 30 p.m. You're all down at the pub with your manager and you had a little bit to drink and you go, I deserve a pay rise. I thought you were gonna slide a um compromising photo across the <laughs> table and be like, I want twenty thousand dollar pay rise or no, else. no, look. Um there are different ways to uh, ask for a pay rise. And I find uh, that the best way to do it um, is to come at it with a bit of a plan and not just to blurt out at some point, hey, give me more money. Mm, yep. Um, so you need to ask for, say, you talk to your manager and go, I, I need my, my income to go up. I appreciate that my value within the business needs to go up. I can't mm. just deliver what I'm delivering and expect to um, to be paid more. Yeah. Can you help me work on a plan um, so that I can I can increase my income? Yeah, and it's like it's a really interesting dynamic between manager and employee, where uh, the the lines of communication are quite formal often, uh, and you know there's there's a lot of unknowns between the two. But actually, I find it very rare. Does a manager not want to help their employees succeed? Mm -hmm. um, and actually, like, just going to them going, I want more money. Yeah, look, everyone wants more money. But if you approach it correctly going, hey, here's where I am at the moment. Here's where I want to be. How do we get there? Mm -hmm. You you help me to get there. And let's, let's go on this journey and let's get. And when I get there, what does the remuneration look like? And if you are at a point where you think, actually, you know what? I'm pretty underpaid for where I am. I've assessed what's out there in the market and similar jobs and I could move to go to another employer and be paid a little bit more money or a lot more money. You can take that to your employer and go, look, here's the responsibility I started this role with. Here's the responsibility and the task that I'm carrying out now. There's been a significant increase in the amount of work I'm doing and the tasks that I'm performing and I'm doing them well. I need my remuneration to match that. And if the blowback is there's no way we can do that, you go, well, hey, look, Here's what I'm uh, similar roles being paid in the market. And if you can't do this, I have to go look elsewhere, right? You put it back on the manager. Yeah. And that's the key piece is around the, um, the what's the market dictating mm. my value is as well. The other bit is. Um, Don't tell me you can't be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other bit is 
I think these conversations can get quite emotional yeah. because people don't like the conflict mm. of going, essentially we're talking about you know what somebody's value. I think that's fundamentally quite a personal thing yeah. which can create an emotional response instead of a collaborative response where we're getting the outcome that we want. So instead of talking about your situation mm. going, it's really hard for me to pay my bills or I can't achieve my goals or um, I give you lots of, you know, I give you lots of my energy, all of my time, and I'm not being rewarded for it. Firstly, what's the first thing you heard a lot there? I, mm. you're talking about you. There's no collaboration in terms of, because if your value goes up within the business, you know, you're, you're contributing more, you're adding more revenue, you're bringing more profit, you're creating more opportunities. Everybody wins, right? And that's, should I talk about society? That, I mean, that is the problem with, um, to be honest, society these days with a lot of the people that I talk about. Everybody wants the thing. They want, you know, the nice car, the big house. You have to do the work. It's not a complicated equation, is it, Mike? No, it's not. And look, in terms of uh, when you approach these conversations, James's point about it being emotional is super important. You've got to remember that fundamentally, this is a negotiation, yep. right? You you cannot step out of that mind frame. I know you like your boss. I know you like the company. I know Maybe. you like everyone you work with. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't get the remuneration that is appropriate for the tasks you're carrying out and for your work. I think a lot of people get caught in that trap. On the flip side, if you approach the discussion with, you're never going to replace me. Like I'm fundamental to this. And if you don't pay me this, I'm just going to walk straight out. You're not going to get what you want. No. You're going to have to go somewhere else for that. It's about making this a collaborative effort. And even to the point where let's say you're on 85 and you want 95, or you're on 75 and you want 85 and your boss goes, I can't do that right now. You know, I can do half of that. Great. So here's what we can do now. Now we work on the plan. How are we going to get to the salary that I think is appropriate? What is the length of time? And what are the tasks that I need to do or the KPIs that I need to hit to get there? It needs to be very clear. I think the we can't do that right now is a, a really important one to remember mm. that apparently, Mike, we're in a recession. And the, the, the other piece to keep in mind is that while your skills and value might be going up, it's quite possible that the business that you're working yeah. for is starting to struggle a little bit. Mm. So they, they, like we do need to keep in, I mean, if you can go get paid a lot more somewhere else and you can job hop and that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But if the business is going, look, I understand, I really appreciate the value. Mm. It's just look at our revenue, you know, month on month, quarter on quarter, year on year. We're just having to tighten up the shop right yeah. now. But if you stay with me on the journey, I will reward you over time. Mm. You know, they're, they're probably different discussions. Ah, oh, 100%. And there's a number of ways you can approach this, like not even just salary. You can ask for additional things, right? And mm. like you can look for, I mean, I remember when I was uh, changing jobs in the UK, um, they wanted to pay me more than my boss would have been paid, right? So instead of getting it as a salary, I got a sign-on bonus instead, mm. uh, where it was a one-off payment where they didn't have to adjust their entire pay categories just to accommodate me but i'm worth it yeah i think the other piece to remember in here as well is the squeaky wheel gets the oil yeah if you Shy kids get no lollies yeah if you are if you are if your boss can go and trust me leo you know, uh, every manager will go yep i get this yeah. if you know there's one person who's going to create a lot of conflict around this in you know a healthy way and go, I know they're going to be hitting me up. I know they're going to be wanting their market value. Mm. And somebody else in the background who's, and I can think of lots of people around me in my personal life who go, you know, I got a 5% pay rise and, and I go, but look at all the stuff that you do. Yeah. And I go, oh, I, I don't want to, I just don't, don't want to have that boat. conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I'm happy, like, I don't know, I've hit a hundred grand, whatever. Mm. Um, you will never get your market value. You have to push for your market value. Remember, if you don't prioritize and you don't care about your value in the marketplace and your career, why the hell should anybody else care? Yeah, hundred percent. And 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 again, right? So it's create a plan. Think about what you want. Make sure it's in line with the market. Um, you know, write down a list of skills you have. Write down a list of you know the additional things you're doing or how you've gone over and above or, you know, the targets that you're smashing, you know, and a lot of people come to us 
talk about side hustles. I'm like, don't, don't mess around with a side hustle. Mm. Focus on your job. Make sure you're hitting 110% of the target. Make sure you're hitting 120% of the target. Yeah. Not selling ankl- anklets at the market on a Sunday for 50 cents a pop. Yeah. Like it ain't going to get you there. Mm. So, you know, think about the plan. Make sure it's a good roadmap. Make sure you're working with your manager. Make it a collaborative thing. It doesn't need to be confrontation. Yeah. The, coming back to the skills piece. So we're talking about the short-term pieces mm. around the conversation, the importance of conversation, how to have it. Really important part, making sure you're prepared, obviously, yeah. is... Um, of course, a given with all of this. The other bit in terms of as longer term is Mike touched on it quickly, skills. Yeah. So the more valuable you can, don't just clock into work, clock out of work if you want to increase your income. If you're happy at the level you're earning, you've got a good work-life balance, don't make a change. But if you want your income to go up, you need to increase your skills on the market. Now, what are ways that you can do that? Find people where you want to be. Yeah. It's crazy how easy it is to find a mentor if you hit people up. Just ask. Yeah. Everyone yeah. wants to help. Yeah. And it's it's flattering being like, I love where you are. I want to be in your position one day. How Will do you help, help me? me do it? Yeah, yep. yeah. And coming back to the skills thing, James, we get emails fairly regularly with people who want to come and work for us and go, I want to be an advisor. What is the first thing you email them back? Have you finished your level five? Have you finished your level five? Don't that's the on. financial advice qualification. Yeah, so that is the, that is the uh, minimum qualification to be a financial advisor. And in the mortgage game, in the debt game, we call it hurt money, right? Have you got some hurt money in the game? Mm. If you just come to me like, I want to be an advisor, great, everyone has dreams. Mm. Where's the hurt money? Mm. Have you put some effort into this? Yep. You show me what you've done before we take a risk on you. It, yep. it honestly changes the game entirely. Yeah, and just remember, fundamentally, your value in the market is only two things. It's your skills mm. and your effort. Yeah. So you need to look at, there's only two parts of this equation. How do I get my skills up? I'm actually just, I thought of a third part. <laughs> How do I get my skills up? What skills am I focusing on? Is there a course that I need to go on? Yeah. Will my employer pay for it? How do I go and find those skills? Yeah. The second part is the effort. So everything in life that you want is hard. It mm. does not come running a freaking business Oh, it, it's way harder than I thought it would be. And I keep going to tell myself that it'll be worth it'll it. be worth it one day. I'll let you know when the day uh, yeah. comes because Mike and I are just going to be doing this full time. Yeah. Um, they're the two parts of the equation. The third bit, which especially if you're in a, oh, the big corporate machine, which yeah. is a reality of the situation, is being liked. You like if you are you really good at your job. Politics, yeah, yeah. If you are really good at your job. If you work um, long hours, have the skills, you still need to build the right relationships. Fundamentally, people want to help people that they like. Yeah. And while that might not be fair, that's reality, that's society, that's the system. You can't change the system. Yeah. Join the system um, and make sure that you can um, you build those relationships so oh. you've got people in the right places endorsing you. I think it's just about playing the game smart, right? And like, for example, when we're in the bank and, and people would ask me for advice, my advice to you if you're a banker is get out of the branch land as soon as you can and get into the head office. A branch? I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally, I did it. I was in the um, call center because I was like, this is a desert yeah. out here. No one knows who I am. No one sees me out here. Yeah. I'm never going to get anywhere. The uh, large corporations for your first job are a phenomenal pathway. Mm. You is, there are people, there are places you can go. They are always shuffling in terms of personnel. It is opportunity, opportunity land galore. However, you've got to get to head office and you've got to be there and you've got to be doing additional things. If you're not in head office and you're not bumping into people and you're not going to meetings with people and you're not seeing people, if you want to work from home five days a week, I'm sorry, you're just going to get looked over. And then above and beyond that, right? Like do the social things. Yeah. People are nice. I, I help people that I like. Mm. It's it's just a fundamental fact. Play cricket with people. Do other things with people. Even if yeah. you're not good at it. I broke my nose playing cricket yeah. with people, but it helped me. Yeah, blood over somebody's car, go in the hospital. I did. Yeah, shout out Luke Smith. Yeah, thanks, um, mate. <laughs> now, we talked about the side hustle piece, and yeah. I agree that generally it's people essentially just want to get ahead mm. without doing the work. However, there is an argument down the track if your skill set is something where you can – jump into uh studying your own business or buying into something down the track builder yeah obviously yeah obviously there's a lot of um uh there's risk associated Mm. but there's huge upside so that is definitely an avenue worth exploring what is a great way to help you take bigger risks 
is having financial stability. Yeah. Do I have cash set aside where I can go a period of time um, without money? If you're living paycheck to paycheck, essentially you can never take any risk. Nah, and, and we see this not just on the um, uh, trying to better your pay, but on the, on people who are living to paycheck to paycheck but earn a ton of money. Yep. They, they have cornered themselves, they've snookered themselves into a corner. They're at checkmate where they cannot get off the drip of this income mm -hmm. because they will absolutely, just everything falls over. Yep, yep. So multiple aspects in what we've just spoken about. One last shout out, if you're Ravi, um, just create a boarding house within your house and rent out like 37 rooms. Um, we'll leave it there. What's our action off the back of this, Mike? It must I, be the plan. Already it's got to be a plan up. about getting your income. Yeah. You know, and again, this is not a confrontational thing. This is a collaboration with your manager about getting you to where you want to be and you helping the business and the business uh, providing you with the correct remuneration. Yeah. So plenty of actions in there in terms of how can I increase my skills? How do I have that collaborative conversation? Not being emotional creating a boarding house within your house. <laughs> um, lots of ways to do it. So make sure to take that action and go get that money. Is that a wall or did you just put a sheet up in this room? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Bye.